Hello to all of you there. This is Colleen's brother Keith on a mic recording here in British Columbia on Saturday. Well, I can imagine us all together in the soft sand and sultry air of Cape Hatteras at this time. No doubt there is some wind and the sound of waves crashing around. Having been there, I'm so appreciative of your celebration of Colleen's life in this setting. What is an endless summer setting that she lived for? It is heartwarming, and she nurtured many precious friends in Cape Hatteras and other places in the U.S. It is also in sun-quenched, North Carolina windsurfing world that Colleen met the bestest husband a sister could find. Colleen ultimately went from Cape to Cape, Cape Cod was our family's go-to destination for many years where we camped in under the twisted pines. We spent beautiful summer weeks developing deep tans as we played in the waves and the huge dunes of Longnook Beach and Head of the Meadow Beach. Clamming, buying candy on Main Street in Provincetown, ping pong and board games were our rainy day family fun. All six family members would go out in the old woody station wagon to Wellfleet Drive-In to see the latest movies in those salty air evenings and then creep into the campground and my dad would pick up little sleeping Colleen and put her into her bunk. On Cape Hatteras, I remember landing in Kitty Hawk in a Cessna 182 with my stepdad David at the helm, my mom co-piling with Colleen in an Afghan hound in 1980. Years later, we landed within a mile of Rick and Colleen's Frisco home in a Seneca Twin. How fun was that? We had most excellent family get-togethers on Hatteras. Also, Colleen and I would meet up with Mom and David and sisters Nancy and Christiane on Eleuthera Island in the Bahamas at a family house there on the beach. Colleen was in her element there, and we frequently hooked up there for the most excellent family and beach time. My sis was a frequent visitor and made lots of friends there, some from the U.S., Europe, Canada, and many locals. David and my mother encouraged yearly trips there and introduced us to their many friends in their social milieu at Christmas and New Year's and Easter time. There were always plentiful joyous occasions, and no lack of raucous events that would remain on the island. Again, the beach and the sun and the ocean were a Colleen constant. I was a satisfied and most appreciative recipient of Colleen's local and long-distance physical therapy sessions. My sister's passion to help out and the curative results therefrom were amazing. That said, it is the more quirky things that I miss from Colleen. Colleen had this wonderful stride and athletic flow when she moved about. A flash of blue and a flash of blonde with endless legs, she was here, and now she's there. She had the funniest look when she'd lift her chin, just a touch, tilt her head and look at you slightly askew. With these piercing blue eyes, Colleen would indicate that she hadn't quite captured something you had said, but was interested in knowing more. You clearly knew then to rephrase your thought. Her silent facial communications were priceless. As graceful as she could be, I loved it the most when she would get goofy and dramatic, all uncoordinated and changed her voice to tell a story. She made us laugh. In Montreal, she introduced me to her many friends, and I did the same with mine. Despite some age difference, we went to a lot of the same parties and events. Here comes trouble. In the winter months, Colleen and I joined David and my mom for many weekends where we both were in the Ski Hawk racing team. Exciting times were spiked with apres ski shenanigans at Mont Tremblant in the Quebec years. In the kitchen, do not enter or bug the girl in her domain, or watch out. 
Colleen's energy and love for cooking transformed into succulent culinary results. This usually around 9 to 10 at night. Very much like our mom. My sister was hard to catch on the phone, but the time to throw out the hook was when she was on the long drive coming back from work heading down Hatteras Peninsula. With me on the Pacific coast on Vancouver Island, this is when we would finally reach a common